welcome to Medina, the second most important holy city in Islam after Mecca. See the size of this bus park, millions of pilgrims come here every year to Medina as part of their Umrah and Hajj to, um, to, to, to visit the sacred sites and you can see how many buses come. It's just, uh, it's quite incredible really. We've had excellent recommendations for this place for breakfast. So we're gonna come in to try some local dishes. Oh good, I thought it was gonna be really full but it's not as yet. We've been recommended this great cafe. It's called Asati and it's on the Sultana Road. And this is what we're having for breakfast. We're having the masoub, which is the, um, the like local speciality of this place, masoub asati. Mm. Let me just try it. So masoub is with like banana, oats, cream, wow. and honey. It's warm and it's um, sweet and it's delicious. <laughs> and then we've got uh, falafel, uh, asati falafel. So they've got their own spices on there. Well, apparently the difference between these falafel and normal ones, the normal ones are made with chickpeas, and these ones are actually made with full, mm. like a different type of bean. This is full al sati, this is their own special one, with hummus and olive oil. Let's give that a go. <laughs> wow. Mmm. <laughs> oh, that lovely um, taste of the chickpea and the different flavours in there and lots of oil. Delicious. Wonderful. And we've got tea as well. The, um, it's like um, the normal tea that we drink, the Kadak chai. Kadak chai, but it's got a different name. Yeah, they've got mm. their version, Tea Adani Alsati, and you can see here from the menu, the breakfast in total was 45 real. Yeah, so very good. Great way to start the day. One of the things about Medina is like so much of Saudi Arabia, there's a lot of construction going on. So the way we want to go this way is blocked off. We're going to walk down the road. And this is quite an amazing concept I've only ever seen in Saudi Arabia that I can remember. They basically drive through ATMs. No need to get out of your car, folks. You can just drive around this way here, come along and get your money out from the ATM and then drive off again. Just stumbled across a market. So it's a good chance to come in and have a look around. Kind of on another abaya. One of the ones that are more like a jacket. Wow, here's some delicious incense. The stuff that you burn. So lovely. But it smells so nice here. Wow, look at the massive bags of cardamom. The kadak chai. And you put different types of powdered cardamom as well. Wow, there are some beautiful abayas here. So many lovely glittery gold things. In this clock shop you can buy a clock with all the different prayer times in it. So there's the five different times of the day where it's time to pray. The earliest being at the moment 5.41 all the way down to 7.34 p.m. One of the things I love about Saudi Arabia is the different styles of the abayas. Like as opposed to like the Emirates etc and Kuwait. Look, look there's just so many different colours different styles and this right here is only 40. The very first one I tried on, look at it. Very nice, got a braid in on there, yeah. very pretty, look at the sleeves. It's just nice and stunning and it was on the sale rack for 40 so no need to haggle. Are you happy with that Mandy? Yes, I made a purchase. my beautiful, yeah. I mean, seriously this is stunning. I yeah. think I'd even wear it back home, you know what I mean. <laughs> the shop is called Al Marwa. Al Marwa, yes, okay. Yes, and this is Dider. Dider, thank you so much. Okay. Shukran. Very friendly, very helpful. He went yeah. through all the rack and found out a small size for me. Yes. So that's really cool. So. And yeah, like really great products. And the very fact that they have got like a sales rack. Yeah. You know what that's I mean? If you good. want to buy a yeah. beautiful Abaya for 40 real, it's excellent value. All set for Medina. Yeah. Uh, it's really exciting because before you couldn't enter uh, this place be, as a non-muslim now we can so for the first time we can get to see the holy city of medina we're just outside the haram area which was forbidden before now we're going to go in there and see what it's like inside is the prophet's mosque which is where 
Prophet Muhammad is buried and also where his house used to be, where he spent a lot of his life after he was expelled from Mecca. So it's a very important place. Pilgrims come here from all over the world, so it's really interesting to walk around and see life here in Medina. Let's go into the Haram area. There are big roads all around it, so you have to go underground to get into the central area. He's locking up the for midday prayer. What I like about this place has got a really good vibe. Pilgrims are coming from all over the Islamic world. So from Morocco all the way to Indonesia, you'll see faces, you know, from Central Asia, from Africa, from the Indian subcontinent. It's just got an amazing vibe and you can feel that it's so important to people here that, uh, that you know, the passion is there in their eyes. Beautiful artistry with these. And for the hajis who have walked a long way and they're feeling a bit sore, you've got your vapor rub and your tiger balm. Didn't quite expect this to be the first thing we see when we come into the Al Haram area. Got some enormous hotels. big hotels all around us and everyone's swarming towards the Prophet's Mosque now. It's prayer time, 12.33. Time to pray. the differences in Islamic dress. People know where someone is from just for what they wear. Unlike in the West, everyone's in the same things. Here, people are dressed so differently depending on which country they come from. It's so very, very different. And there's building work going on right beside the mosque as well. Heading now to the Southern Park. Of course, one of the wonderful things, because we're at a mosque, the second largest mosque in the world, is free drinking water. We didn't bring a plastic bottle, unfortunately, but there are cups available. So after the prayer time, the mats are all rolled up, put away for the next time. Five times a day. This guy here is dressed for Umrah. It's two pieces of white cloth and that's what they wear when they're doing the, the Hajj procession out of Hajj time. I've seen a few people wearing Umrah clothes. around at the south entrance now to the mosque in the courtyard and the green dome in front of me there is where the Prophet Muhammad is supposed to be buried. Now there's an incredibly long queue over that way for people who want people, to go in. Yeah, have to have a special permit to go in or something like that. There's a long process for people to go in. Obviously we won't be going in there. It's just incredible to see so many people around here. It's believed that the Prophet Muhammad laid the first cornerstone of this mosque in the year 622 when he first arrived in Medina. So just to think that people have been coming here since then to pay homage, quite incredible. There are some lovely old mosques by the Prophet's Mosque. This one here and 
another one through that way. This is the pedestrian walkway between the Prophet's Mosque and the Kuba Mosque, which is 3.5 kilometers to the south. It's an important pilgrim mosque. Most people start there and walk this way to the Prophet's Mosque. We're here at 3.30 in the afternoon and it's dead, everything's shut. But when we come back later in the day, it'll all be open and there'll be a lot of people. <laughs> So along the walkway we've come across this slightly eerie area. It was once a service station, I'm assuming like car repairs. And of course, because it's a walkway now, no vehicles are allowed down this way, I'm assuming they've just had to move out. So this is something we've seen our whole time in Saudi Arabia. Vision 2020. So much work is going into developing the country to be on track to get its 1 million tourists per year by the year 2030. So just by the walkway is this abandoned garden. So it's abandoned quite recently actually. Lovely and verdant, you've got your palm trees. So behind me you can see the Kuba Mosque. And this is incredibly important because this is where the Prophet Muhammad first stopped after he was exiled from Mecca when he arrived in Medina. Apparently he came by camel, stopped here in the, when was it? Six, 622. 622. And that was the beginning of the Islamic calendar. Yes, and the very first mosque in Islam was here. So lovely, it's gone past five o'clock, the temperature's cooling down and people are out and about now. Kiosks have opened up and it's lovely, everything's suddenly coming to life again. Yeah, nice place to chill out and watch the world go by for sure. They quite like these types of stores in Saudi, I've noticed. This one here, everything's 13 real. So one thing I've noticed about Medina, as opposed to Jeddah and Riyadh, there are so many less stray cats around. And it's, it's actually like really nice, because the ones we had seen have all been really well fed, they've been looked after, and yeah. Oh, here, Liz just pointed one out right now. So lovely. And so calm, you know, that well treated and just relaxed. Something I've never seen before in a juice shop. My word. It's like waterfall effect. Well, it certainly is a lot busier now. But it's like almost six o'clock. Shops have opened. And it's always slightly incongruous to see the Western fashion up there. That other dashing yellow dress. So if you've ever wondered what's under an abaya, it could be something like any of these things. There's just such a different side to Medina. Like, I mean, it's dusk now and you've got all the toys are out for people to like rent for the kids. And behind there, there's that blooming raised highway, motorway kind of thing. Looking very modern and new and all the buildings behind. It's amazing. It's just such a contrast, isn't it, Lee, to the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> gotta watch out for these road kids. Like, they're learning to be maniacs when they're on the road for when they're older. <laughs> <laughs> you can see at the head of the mosque, there's a stream of people. And we've just walked two kilometers out of our way to have some al bike. This fried chicken had so better be worth it. We were lucky, I think we just got to our bike before prayers finished because now there's a massive queue up the street that we didn't have to join, so thankful for that. Uh, we're in and out in about 10-15 minutes, not too bad. Yeah, it's a bit of a yeah. weird system in there, but actually this is like three rows of people queuing. It's not just one row, it's three rows. Far out. So you can tell when a place is good value, cheap and, you know what I mean, tasty because that's where everyone goes. So this is 
what it looks like in the evening. A lot of people around here, I think prayers have just finished. Temperature is just nice now walking around in a t-shirt. The beautiful colours. We we'll try and get a bit further away so you can see the green of the of the lights on top of the minarets. There, so beautiful. It's beautiful, Mandy. Absolutely stunning. It's just so beautiful, so wonderful to be here. It turns out in Saudi Arabia that Uber is way better than Kareem. We were given that a uh, bit of a heads up by a friend of ours who told us to download Uber. So we've just ordered a taxi to get back from the mosque to our accommodation and it is a lot cheaper. It's only 12 real. So big bonus, go for Uber. And that completes our day at the Grand Mosque. It's been an amazing day. Stick around to see what comes next. See you in the next one. Bye. Bye.